Hello everyone welcome to my YouTube channel Iraqi Dinar Update. Today, we're going to be discussing a major new paper released by the Iraq Britain Business Council, IBBC, on the de-dollarization of Iraq. This paper is not just about de-dollarization, it covers a wide range of important topics, including banking reforms, the state of Iraqi politics and security, and what Iraq needs to do to increase its exchange rate and avoid further currency devaluation. First, let's talk about the de-dollarization of Iraq. As many of you may know, the US dollar has been a dominant currency in Iraq for years with a significant portion of transactions and savings denominated in dollars. However, the Iraqi government has been making efforts to reduce its reliance on the dollar and promote the use of the Iraqi dinar. This is an important step towards economic sovereignty and stability. According to the IBBC paper, the de-dollarization process in Iraq is underway, but it's a complex and multifaceted challenge. The paper outlines several key factors that need to be addressed, including the role of the central bank, the development of the domestic banking sector, and the integration of Iraq's financial system with global markets. One of the critical aspects highlighted in the paper is the need for banking reforms in Iraq. The Iraqi banking sector has historically been dominated by state-owned banks, which have been slow to adapt to the changing economic land escape. The IBBC paper suggests that Iraq needs to encourage the growth of private banks and promote competition within the banking sector. This will help to improve the efficiency of financial intermediation and increase access to credit for businesses and individuals. Another area of focus in the paper is the state of Iraqi politics and security. The political situation in Iraq has been turbulent for years, with ongoing tensions between different factions and challenges in forming stable governments. The IBBC paper argues that addressing these political and security challenges is essential for the success of economic reforms, including the de-dollarization process. The paper also delves into the issue of the Iraqi dinar's exchange rate. As you may know, the Iraqi dinar has experienced significant devaluation in recent years, which has had a negative impact on the country's economy and standard of living. The IBBC paper outlines what Iraq needs to do to increase its exchange rate and avoid further devaluation. According to the paper, one of the key steps is to increase Iraq's foreign exchange reserves. This can be achieved through a range of measures, including boosting non-oil exports, attracting foreign investment, and reducing imports. Additionally, the paper suggests that Iraq needs to improve its fiscal and monetary policies, to ensure that the dinar's value is aligned with the country's economic fundamentals. The paper also cautions against the temptation to simply increase the exchange rate as a quick fix. The authors argue that this approach is not sustainable and could actually lead to further economic problems. Instead, they suggest a more gradual and comprehensive approach that addresses the underlying structural issues in the Iraqi economy. Overall, the IBBC paper provides a detailed and insightful analysis of the challenges and opportunities facing Iraq as it works to de-dollarize its economy and strengthen the Iraqi dinar. The paper highlights the need for a multifaceted approach that addresses a range of economic, political, and security related factors. As I mentioned earlier, this paper is quite extensive, covering 30 pages of detailed information. While I've tried to summarize the key points, I encourage you to read the full paper if you want to get a deeper understanding of the issues at hand. In conclusion, the IBBC paper on the de-dollarization of Iraq is a must-read for anyone interested in the economic and political developments in the country. It provides a comprehensive analysis of the challenges and opportunities facing Iraq, 
and offers valuable insights into the steps that the country needs to take to achieve greater economic stability and prosperity. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the section below.